putting the Constitution back in its proper context. The purpose of my book, Perceptions of Freedom, is to show how the numbers or qualifications of certain persons in office add up to a military government of the United States as, a, as opposed to a United States government. How the Congress and president are required to have a certain number of years of military service. How the Supreme Court justices are required to have, quote, good behavior without defining the subjective word good. How the justices are part of a system of deception, which being part of a military, who practice deception is good behavior. The better you can deceive, the more favorable your behavior. Once you see the Constitution in this new light of perception, the entire system of deceit and corporate capitalism falls apart. This book can be purchased for $20 via Zelle, emailing me, the veteran liberty lion at gmail.com. The big question in my book that I answer is what is the purpose of the specific qualifications in the Constitution for the Congress, President, and Justices? Let's be rational. Let's stop and think about what the truth is. Who gave you the information you currently believe? Did you ever really stop and think about how the information made sense or did you just accept it since it was driven into you at such a young age? Buddha said, all that we are is defined by our thoughts. It begins where our thoughts begin. It moves where our thoughts move. And it rests where our thoughts rest. We could say we are what we believe, or that we believe what we are told, and that we are told what we are. But what if what we believe is wrong? Some say logic is the language of God. You do not have to believe in God to understand that there's an order to things and that order is logical. So let us be logical like nature or like God and let us think logically. Let us think logically so that we can understand and obtain truth. The qualifications for these positions in the Constitution are very specific. The only way to get people to misunderstand what those qualifications are is to bring people up in a system that teaches them from a young age a misinterpretation of what the words in the Constitution mean, specifically the phrase citizen of the United States. The qualifications are specific and for specific purposes for specific people to qualify for these positions listed in Article 1, 2, and 3. Man is reasonable and being reasonable, man loves truth. So let's talk about the truth. The qualifications are for representatives, seven years a citizen of the United States, and 25 years of age. Senators, which are seniors, are nine years a citizen of the United States and 30 years of age. President is either natural born or citizen of the United States, 14 years and 35 years of age. 
and for justices, good behavior. There are many truths that I can tell you, and if I did, this video would be very long. So to keep this video short, I'll explain only the portion of the Constitution dealing with qualifications. The oaths are an important part of the qualifications. I'll get into that only briefly. And the information also touches on the religious test, exemption in the Constitution. So we're going to talk about qualifications, oaths, and religious test. And we're going to do this brief. When writing to a friend, Hamilton referred to the Constitution as that military Constitution. Keep this in mind as we go through the qualifications. First, we have representatives. This is the lower house of Congress. These men are seven years a citizen of the United States and 25 years of age. Now I ask you, what's so important about these specific numbers? Why seven years specifically and not five years or eight years for these people? Why 25 years of age and not 26 or 18? There's a specific reason for all these numbers. Recall seven, seven years for a representative and 25 years of age. Senators are nine years citizenship and 30 years of age, and president is 14 years citizenship and 35 years of age. When we talk about citizen of the United States, we're not talking about American citizens or state citizens, we're talking about federal citizens. These federal citizens are military people. So why, why are these numbers important? Why is 25 years better than 26 years? Why was seven years a citizen for representative less important than nine years for a senator? It cannot be simply that it's a matter of loyalty. Just being a citizen does not make you loyal. There's no proof that someone is a loyal citizen based on a specific number of years. Why is nine years citizenship or 14 years citizenship better than seven years? It's because it is not about loyalty. It's about training. It's about being trained as a citizen of the United States. And the training you receive makes you qualified for a certain position. I can't simply be a CEO of a large corporation unless I'm the one who built it. Instead, I would have to attend school, get some hands-on experience, and compete with other qualified applicants then perhaps I might be a good CEO. What about military training? I cannot be properly trained without also having experience. If I have four years experience in the military, I may be qualified for a higher rank. I may be better at my job than someone who has only one year experience in training. If I have seven years military experience, I'm more qualified since I have more training and experience. If I have nine years military experience, I'm more qualified than someone with seven years. And the same with 14. So it's about training. It's about being qualified. It's not about loyalty. You can be a citizen for one year and be more loyal than someone who's been a citizen all their lives. Here's the meat of the qualification situation in the Constitution. A citizen of the United States is a federal person on federal lands. Non-commissioned officers of the military must be at least 18 years of age Commissioned officers of the military must be at least 21 years of age. 
all military officers have a military oath. A representative must have seven years military experience and training to be a representative. He's probably a non-commissioned officer who at the age of 18 can become a non-commissioned officer. At the time of the writing of the Constitution, you could enlist for certain positions in the military at the age of 14. By the time he reached the status of non-commissioned officer, he should be roughly about 18. He could be older and he would still meet that requirement of age as long as he still had seven years experience. At 18, a man could become a non-commissioned officer. He had training for those lower positions as an enlisted person or a troop. And then he met the requirement to become a non-commissioned officer. He then adds seven years to his age. So from 18 plus seven is 25. If he's 18 and has seven years military training and has reached the age of 25, he may become a representative in the House of Congress. So 18 years of age for his non-commissioned requirement plus seven more years military experience. And by then he should reach at least the age of 25, unless he became a non-commissioned officer later, he still has to have the seven years, but he may be older, which means he surpasses the qualification of age. It's the same for senators. Senator means senior. These are senior officers. Senior officers are commissioned officers. They must be 21 to receive a commission. They have more responsibility. They command the non-commissioned officers. They are 21 and then have added to that nine years experience in the military and therefore 21 at the time of their commission plus nine years military experience they must have reached the age of 30. So 21 plus nine is 30. 21 years of age plus nine years military experience is 30 years old. Of course, if a man receives his commission, not at 21, but maybe at 22 or older, he must still meet the nine years military experience requirement and can sit as a Senator, but he would be over the age of 30 so he would still qualify and is the same for president. The constitution states that the president can be a natural born citizen. This might be confusing to the lay reader of the constitution, but it makes sense since after 14 years of service, a man in the military might leave military. He might be retired. When he is no longer in the military and returns to being a natural born citizen, in other words, not a legal fiction citizen of the United States, which is what your birth certificate says, this is a status George Washington called a private citizen in his retirement letter to his friend. Therefore, the president can be a natural born citizen, meaning he is retired from the military, or he can be currently serving in the military and be called a citizen of the United States. Whatever status he has at the time of his election, he must also be having 14 years a resident on federal lands, also meaning he was a citizen of the United States, and he must, must have reached the age of 35. So he must have been a commissioned officer. He must have received a commission. Commissioned officers have to be 21. 21 plus 14 years military experience gives you the age of 35. A person who's been in the military for 14 years, whether currently serving 
and is a citizen of the United States or has retired and returned to private life as a private citizen being natural born citizen, he must have had the required 14 years and must have reached the 35 years of age to become the president. The president must take the presidential oath. If he's in the military or retired, Article 2 has a required specific oath to the president that he must take. So even if he's active duty and is elected president, he still has to take the presidential oath. Congress in Article 1 has no specific oath. Therefore, they come under the military oath, which they should already have since they're actively in service to the country. Now let us speak of the justices of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is a Supreme Court of the United States. The United States is a military state, a federal state. The justices have one requirement, good behavior. Good is subjective. Good to me might not be good to you. So good to who? Good to the military. The military practices the art of deception. It's what they do. It's their job. They're required to have training and experience in performing it and detecting it. This is why they need the military experience before they can sit in these military, federal, constitutional positions. When a military president selects a person to be a justice, he would want that person to advance the military state and the military Congress would approve the person who will advance the military state and its military deception as this is good behavior. Therefore, any justice who practices deception to advance the military state would be considered good to be selected and sit as a justice. So the religious test. Machiavelli in his book, The Prince, has stated that to be a good prince, one must not stick to certain morals, and those includes Christian morals. Because your enemy, the whole purpose of the military is to keep us safe. Your enemy may not be Christian, and they may not practice good Christian morals. So if you're good and Christian and you're practicing certain ideas of what Christianity is, you place yourself at a disadvantage. So for the military, you can be religious, but there is no real place in the art of deception to win wars in the government. There's no place for Christian morals as far as the military goes. So who wants to be lied to? I don't. It makes us fools. We've been manipulated. It keeps us controlled like children. I don't know about most people, but sometimes when I sit and think about all the terrible things that these sociopaths have done to this country, I start to feel that burn in my guts, that deep down burning sensation. It starts small and it just slowly rises up to my chest. And as it rises, it just gets hotter and hotter. And this burning gets so intense, it just energizes me and I have to move. And I'm moving and walking and walking and pacing and I think about it. It's a natural thing. It's, it's God's way of saying it's time to get up. You're thinking and it's time to act. It's time to speak. It's time to flash your sword. 